So compatibility on this controller is for the Windows, of course, because, well, Xbox, Windows, Microsoft, they're kind of, they all run the same, own the same or whatever. So yes, you can use this on both. So XYBA on here, uh, man, these are super like lifted. Like, I feel like these are lifted more than normal. Like they're just, there's, there's a, there's just a lot of lip there, if you can see what I'm seeing there. And another thing I don't like about them is, man, the loosey goosey. There's a lot of play in these buttons themselves, and you can literally see down in there. And now I'm not gonna say that other controllers you can't see in the gaps and stuff like that, but these are just, they're literally very loosey goosey. I'm not a big fan of these buttons at all. I mean, they press fine, they feel okay, but at the end of the day, there's, they could have done a little bit better, tightened the buttons down a little bit more, brought these, these shells around it a little bit more, and it could have made it a much better in my personal opinion. The D-pad on here feels okay. I had no problems with it and stuff. It's not loose and goosey like the XYBA button on here by any stretch of the imagination, and it felt pretty good. The other buttons on here, including the Xbox button, because uh, you guys and gals asked me to start kind of like paying attention to this more. I didn't know this was used as much as people was telling me has been used. They use this actually as an actuation button for some certain things. Uh, it feels pretty good. It does, there's not a whole lot of uh, issue with it. I will say there is a little bit of play with it. Not as bad as the XYBA button, in my personal opinion. And there is a little bit of a stick up. It's not as bad as these. I, by any stretch, this is actually more preferred, in my personal opinion. Like if they could have done this over here, I think these buttons would have been a lot better. But it does press in, it doesn't feel hollow or anything when I press it. That has a nice press to it, as well as the other buttons themselves. These buttons, uh, in my personal opinion, feel better than the XYBA button. So take that for what it's worth. All right, let's move on to the sticks on the controller itself. All right, let's see what the tri uh, stick drift out of the box is. And it looks like it came in right at zero. So 0 0.0002 are just perfect on potentiometers out of the box. That means there is no stick drift out of it. Uh, we'll have to see on the app if there is dead zones that they have turned up on it or not, but it's still good to see right out of the box. And now let's check the circularity of the controller itself which is, you know, this is average. This is normal. This isn't nothing new. You need potentiometers. Hall effects are gonna be a lot lower, but here um, they're pretty much normal. 10 to 12 is pretty normal to me. And then when it comes to like tension and stuff on here, they feel pretty good. I'll be, uh, I'll be honest, they feel pretty much like a normal Xbox controller, like your original Xbox controllers with tension and stuff like that. So you, I know you guys and gals like to ask me about that in the comments below. So yes, they feel good and they feel great. And when it comes to control freaks, control freaks do sit on here. There'll be the Xbox control freaks, the ones that I have and own. I will link those in the comments below as long well with this controller too, if you do decide to buy it at the end of the video. And uh, one last thing I forgot to mention about the sticks themselves is the RGB little ring that's around them is actually the same as an uh, anti-friction ring. So these controllers are very smooth to move around the controller themselves, which is, you know, good to see. And um, you know, the RGB rings are kind of serving as a dual purpose there. So it's good to see, moving on. And hitting the sticks one more time, These this controller will not overclock. I did try to overclock it as I do with all my controllers and no, this controller will not overclock. On the bottom of the controller, you do have a 3.5 millimeter jack and that as well for wired headsets, of course. No, this will not work for wireless headsets before you ask me down below. Let's talk about comfort, ergonomics and stuff of the controller real quick before we flip it around, talking about the flippity flap your back, back, back buttons. That screwed out all up. But uh, comfort of controller, well, I mean, it, it feels good. It, there's nothing wrong with it. It feels like a good Xbox controller, in my personal opinion. Just, I've done some controllers recently where these were more flatter. This has got a little bit more of a round grip to it, which feels better in the hands, in my personal opinion. Um, when it comes to the back of it itself, it has some stipple on the back of it. Let's see if I can get a good shot for you guys there. It's not like a real rough or um, like aggressive stipple, ripple if you've been here a while, but it's there, you can kind of notice it, it you know, it's, you know, it's it's okay. It's not the best to be 100% honest with you, but it's there. And you know, in any case, it's better than nothing, I suppose. Now let's talk about the back buttons on the controller for a second. Now talking about ergonomics and stuff, the back buttons are always, I, I feel like they just, they did a good job, man. They, these, these things fit right there where my middle fingers go under the controller itself. And I have no problem actuating them when I'm playing the game. I don't feel like I have to reach or I gotta be in a weird position or anything like that to actuate them. They sound pretty good for me, for the most part. 
You can let me know in the comments below what you think they sound like. I feel like they sound fine. I don't think there's there anything wrong with them. They definitely are not like loosey goosey like the buttons up top. I need a little bit of play with them, but not much at all. Let's see if I can get you a good angle there. Good shot. So a little bit of play, but not a whole lot in my personal opinion. Let's talk about the triggers and the bumpers on this controller for a second. A couple things here. The first thing is gonna be this. The bumpers, well, they sound and feel pretty good. I don't have an issue with them. They don't feel mushy, but they don't feel clicky either. I mean, there's very little sound. They feel pretty quiet, actually, in my personal opinion. In the back, the triggers themselves, they feel really, they, they feel okay. There's nothing wrong there. There's not a whole lot of tension behind them, but they feel fine. What I'm not happy about, I'm not, not, not that I'm, not that I'm not happy, I'm like I'm nitpicking a little bit here, but there's no gripple, stipple on these at all anywhere. And I'm just, I, so many controllers that I've reviewed that they, they put them either here or all the way around or something. It would have been nice to see that here, but like a little bit of a touch so that when we rest our fingers, there's something that our skin can actually kind of hold on to, especially if I get an itch while I'm trying to sweat and game, being a professional that I am. Okay, I'm not that, I, okay, I, I suck. But still, the point is it'd have been nice to see there and it was in there so i gotta point it out right and another thing i noticed i i don't know if you guys noticed and i had a i pulled out the the infinity spectrum controller just to see and it does the same thing there's a click listen to this i don't know if i can pick it up here there's a click I, like as soon as you kind of like start to pull the trigger now I, all these other controllers that i've messed with and stuff i pull out like here's a controller right here i can do that with that's not there. I, mean, I got controllers there. I could literally pull out these, all these other controllers and I, I don't notice that. So I'm trying to figure out why, what is in there. So where I first pull it, like I'll tell you when it, where, when it does it. Right there, right there. See how much I'm pulling it and it's, it's clicking. I don't know what that is. It's almost like a mouse click. Like they put that in there to give it that, that sound, which is nice, I guess, but I'm trying to figure out what the point of it is at the same sense. Like, is there a point to it or is it there just to kind of give off the impression of a mouse click and triggers? And if, if that's the case, then we could have probably done something different there to make the controller actually better. If you know what I mean? Like, I'm not mad at it. I'm just kind of, what's the point of it? That, you know what I mean? But. It could just be the way they build them. That's just the way it is. And that's just, they're just there. It's just like, I, hey, we built a controller. That's the way it sounds. So take it for what it is. Just throwing it out there. And then you have your trigger stops. And what it's going to show, uh, see here on the trigger stop side is if you have them off, which you get 100% pull on, you put them to the middle, you get 70% pull. And then if you turn them all the way on, you're only getting like 30 to 30, 40% pull. So we'll have to see if the app itself has trigger hair triggers or dead trigger dead zones on here to turn these down to get these 100 percent pull which if so would be very very good that they added that to these this this style controller finally for the price point as well all right guys so the first thing we're gonna do is show you how to set up the bat buttons themselves so you're gonna hold this button at the very top right here you're just gonna hold it by itself you're gonna see the light right here in the middle start to flash as so once this starts to flash you'll hit whatever button you want to put on the back so we're gonna hit a button the controller is gonna start flashing really quick and then I'm gonna hit this button right here and as you see, it automatically is set. Once it's set, you'll be good to go. You can use that button as such. Now, if you don't want a button back there, you wanna switch them or turn them off or whatever, do the same thing. You're gonna hold that button once it starts flashing. You're just simply gonna hit the back button. Once you do that, it's gonna delete it off of there and now nothing's set to that. So simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's move on to how to use the RGB lights. All right, guys, so to set up the RGB lights to kind of do what you want to do, the first thing you're gonna do is hold the back middle button right here for three seconds. Once you hold it, it's gonna start flashing. Once it's flashing, here, let me turn this off so you can see what's going on here. You can hit right on the D-pad and what'll happen is the zone that you're gonna play with, it will flash. So right now it's in this zone. There's four different zones. So uh, that zone down here at the bottom, then you have the zone that's right here. And again, you have the zone that goes around and then you got the zone with the middle right here. We're gonna play with the middle one right here. So once you do that, you will hit one of the buttons here to pick a color so we can go with the Y blue or purple like you can kind of go around and play with these themselves and mess with the different shades like all these do different colors like there's different shades and different colors for everything so i will go right there i'll leave that there 
And then if I want to, I can go to a different color, different zone and set this up differently. So we will find a color we like, we'll go there. Again, we're gonna go over here and do the same thing. Now you can hit left on the D-pad itself. Let's get to so where you can see it. And if you hit left, you'll cycle through if it's gonna breathe, be on a cycle mode, or if it's gonna be solid. So, it, you know, you can kind of set it up to do that. As you can see, it's kind of switching colors on its own now, which I think is pretty cool. So I'll probably keep it like that on that zone right there. Now to adjust the volume or the brightness is simple. You just up and down on the D-pad. So I would go down like this and this will just bright uh, take the colors down since I'm in this mode down here. You can kind of see they went off. And if I press up, it's gonna come back up and bring them back up just like so. Simple as that easy peasy lemon squeezy. And once you're done and you got it set up, just, just simply hold the back button again. It's gonna flash and then there you go, you're set up. All right, let's check out the RGB lights on the TV itself and show you how to play with those and set those up as well. So you see the LED shoot light at the top, that's all I covered on my 75 inch TV. So if you are looking for something that's gonna go around, the kit's not it because it's only like a four foot cable and that's it. Make sure you use the little tabs that come with it to hold the ends up where the little brick is because if not, it'll start pulling your strip down. I found out the hard way. But in any case, to activate this, to use this, you're gonna hold the back button right here like you did for the middle button to activate it. So for three seconds, the controller will start blinking green like so. Once this controller blinks green like so, it will not do anything on the, the, the console itself until you get out of the mode because you're gonna be controlling the lights from here. Where are you supposed to be in this? If I hold the controller up here, it's not working because the transmitter is behind the TV, so I have to literally hold it down here to get it to work. So, yeah, not a... If you're not... So, <laughs> So you have to have the transmitter like kind of hanging out on the side maybe a little bit to make this work a little bit better, I would assume. So let me do that real quick and see if that helps. All right, so I just literally just brought it out and it's literally hanging in front of the TV. But yes, it, it works much better now. So I would probably maybe try to stick it at the bottom or maybe just pinch it on the outside so it could see it. Cause if not, you're gonna have this issue too. Uh, it kind of sucks. But anyhow, in any case, if you go, it's just like on the controller itself. You can go through the colors like so, and if you hit the same one, you can cycle through the different color phases and stuff like that, and you could do all that. What you can also do is on the uh, D-pad itself, you press the D-pad left, you can cycle through, which one is for breathing or cycling. I'm guessing that's breathing. The other one should be for cycle, which is what it's doing now. And then if you go to music, it should like, you know, when you go to do certain things. Okay, that's solid. So you got solid and then you got music. So you can, it kind of goes to the sound. Check one, check two. And then whatever that is. So you have a couple different ones. And then brightness adjustment, you can go up and down on the D-pad. If you go down, it'll go all the way down. If you go up, it'll go all the way up. And then you can also sync it to the LED strip uh, on one of the zones on your controller, like you know how you have the zones, you can do uh, cycle it to that as well. You press RB, it will cycle through. So we're in the middle one right now, as you can see, and it's set to that. To turn it off, to turn off this mode, you literally hold the back button for three seconds. It will go off and then boom, there you go. You see how I did all the flashing and stuff. So now it's set to whatever you set it to on the controller, which I have it through cycle mode evidently, and I didn't set it up right in the middle right here. So yeah, I think personally, if I'm being real and honest, I think I don't care about this. I, I can buy an LED strip and put it on my own TV and do the same thing with a remote control. So yeah, moving on. All right guys, to cut time off this video because these videos are starting to get longer and longer because the controllers are getting more advanced, of course. 
but the app portion that I put in here was like a four or five minute portion. I cut out because literally there's, you don't need the app. The, the app is, I'm just gonna be real stupid. You can't do nothing in it, but you adjust your dead zone. So if you need to adjust your dead zones in this trigger, the, the controller itself or the, uh, the sticks, you go download the app. It's pretty simple, it's self-explanatory. It comes with, it's set to zero in the app and it comes in the box with zero stick drift. So it's good out of the box. Don't worry about it. So yeah, other than that, you can't do nothing. You can't set tr hair triggers or anything like that in the app. It, literally the app is worthless. You can you do everything on the controller itself. So just save yourself time. Don't even download it. Final thoughts on the controller though. This controller is like $44, $45 brand new. Of course you can get the kit. I think it's like $52 to $55. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll post it right here for you guys to see. Uh, the kit I, 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 I can do without. The RGB lights and all that on the TV and having set that sensor up just right so this controller will communicate with it. I can go buy a $15 set of lights that'll go all the way around the TV. I'm like, gonna get a little four foot cable with the kit because that's all you get, it's a four foot cable. You, you know, I can get a remote that controls it and I'm good to go. You can buy the other 18 foot cable that goes with this. I think it's around $20. I'll post that down there in case you want to buy it for some reason. If you're into that, that's cool. I'm just telling you, I'm not. I wouldn't have bought it if I could go back, to be honest with you. I just bought the controller and viewed it by itself. But I will say this. So at the end of the day, this controller is pretty much the same as Spectrum Infinity. So if you like the Spectrum Infinity, you're gonna like this controller. This controller does have four rumber monitors in it. It does have the USB-C at the top of it. And it does come out of the box zero stick drift. So that's nice as well. But when it comes to something like the GameSir G7 compared to this, you know, this is the same price as this and I'm getting Hall Effect sensors or the G7 where I get tactile buttons and in the app itself, it gives me the hair trigger modes. It doesn't have trigger stops on the back of it like this does, but I do get the hair triggers and I'm supposed to be getting a thousand Hertz out of this controller eventually and possibly the G7 too. I still believe that's gonna be an update with the next update to come out. But I guess I really need to do a comparison with these two so you guys can see that. If you wanna see that comparison, let me know in the comments below. If you like the Spectrum Infinity and you like this controller, let me know in the comments below too. As always, everything in the video will be posted below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace and love.